Henry Pond. Welcome to my YouTube broadcast. Today is July 24th, 2024. Well, to say that we live in interesting times is an understatement. This past week, we saw uh, former President Trump be shot and survive that shot, uh, amazingly. And we saw President Biden drop out of the race, which he said he wouldn't do, but he did and endorsed Vice President Harris um, and a number of, excuse me, a number of other people are also endorsing her. So here you have things look very different than they did just a little over a week ago um, politically. And we live in a very political uh, culture. There are people in the political realm or in the financial realm who believe if we have a Republican or a Democrat uh, elected, this one or that one, it's gonna be good for the market or it's gonna be bad for the market. And uh, so, or it's gonna be good for the market going up to the election and then something different after the election and so forth. What I have seen in the past is that oftentimes, regardless of party, that after the election, the market tends to go up because the market hates uncertainty. And up to that point, there is uncertainty. I'm not saying it's gonna be negative uh, up till then, but uh, I've seen oftentimes, regardless of which party gets elected, that the market tends to go up after the election. So I just wanted to add that comment because uh, it, you may think, well, if this one gets elected or that one gets elected, it's for sure going to go down. I have not seen that be the case. Okay, now I'm going to go over to the um, dashboards, and you can see what went on this past week. It was mostly negative. Uh, the last couple of weeks have been negative. Uh, so, no, excuse me, th this past week has been negative. And you can see in the, this is the, um, six major equity indexes that I look at and the long-term government bond at the bottom, uh, TLT. You can see in the yellow box, this shows the um, gains or losses this past week. Quite a bit of losses, but the small cap, Russell 2000 small cap ETF IWM uh, was positive and the Dow Industrials were positive. So there was a shift away from growth type stocks or tech stocks and the foreign markets over into value. In the pink box, you see uh, these are the year to date returns, certainly led by the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. To the far right, you see where do those stack up against the uh, moving averages? So. This went from all green last week, remember that, all green to now we have seven red that are below those moving averages. In the 20 day, we have five out of seven. And uh, then we have two out of seven on the 50 day, the rest are positive. The long-term government bond not only was negative for the week, but is still negative for the year. When you go back to four to four and a half years, I'll show you this chart in a little bit, uh, the, the long-term government bond uh, ETF, TLT, has been down about 50% at, at its worst point. It's now recovered a little bit, but it is still extremely negative. So uh, people who are in buy and hold portfolios or use bond funds or bond ETFs in their portfolio, uh, have paid a big price for doing that because it's it's um, been a very huge drag on buy and hold portfolios. The S&P 500 is broken down into 11 sectors, separate component parts of the economy and part of the uh, broad market index. You can see in the yellow box that this last week some of these uh, sectors were negative and some were positive. It is definitely a mixed picture. What was the most negative was 
uh, consumer discretionary retail and absolutely technology. Um, when you go over to, and most of the others were positive, when you go over to the pink box, you can see this is year to date. You can see that all of them were po are positive for the year, uh, especially including technology, financials, uh, energy, industrials, healthcare, et cetera. And, uh, and it, it went down from there. Negative for the year, telecommunications, down 2%. There were four out of 44 that are below their moving averages, and those are represented by the red dots. This is the S&P 500 for the last 24 months. Uh, you can see the tick down at the in the far right corner. You can see that tick down, and that represents the loss that the S&P had for this last week. But when you look at the longer term trend over a couple of years, still it is well above its 20 period moving average and uh, on a weekly chart and uh, still has not broken the trend line, still moving in an upward direction. When I take that and put it into a nine month chart, still weekly, in other words, each bar represents one week, but do it over a nine month period instead of a 24 month period, you can see if it is red, solid red, that would generally mean that it was a negative, um, negative week. When it is hollow, that generally represents it started here and finished here, which means it was generally a positive week. Still moving in an upward direction, and in my opinion, has not broken the trend line down. When I do a comparison with the, S the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500, putting the NASDAQ 100 as the numerator and the S&P as the denominator, if it goes up, that favors the NASDAQ. If it goes down, it favors the S&P. You can see the big tick down at the upper right part of the chart and that shows the degree to which the NASDAQ underperformed the S&P 500. Um, or said another way, it's the degree to which the NASDAQ 100, or excuse me, the S&P 500 outperformed the NASDAQ 100. But in general, it is still in an upward direction over that period of time. I take that and I reverse it, or I make the inverse of it, and I make the S&P the numerator, not the NASDAQ, and I make the NASDAQ the denominator. So you can see the degree to which the NASDAQ, uh, the S&P, has underperformed the NASDAQ. And that's the same chart, just I just turned it on its head. So you can see the tick up in the far right, that's the indication of the degree to which the S&P outperformed the NASDAQ for that week. Now I put, take the S&P, break it apart, and into growth and value. Growth, or growth stocks, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, etc. Those uh, are the numerator, and the denominator is value, the companies like Boeing and Ford and uh, Johnson and Johnson, etc. Those companies are the denominator. So when it goes up, it favors more the growth companies, usually tech. And when it goes down, that means it favors value. So you can see this last couple of weeks it definitely favored value. Then I look at the S&P 500 and compare it to the to IWM, which is the small cap, Russell 2000 small cap index. And you can see the degree to which the um, small cap IWM significantly outperformed the S&P 500, both the S&P as well as the NASDAQ. So a downward move favors small cap. An upward move favors the broad market. Long-term government bond still is in a long-term uh, decline. 
and you can see this is over a 54 month period. So I show you approximately the last uh, 48 months or so, 50 months, and you can see the the rate the level of decline. Um, it is way down. It has come all the way from in price. $170, 172 dollars, and it went all the way down to around 82 dollars, over 50 percent decline in a longer period than this. But this gives you at least a four and a half year period to look at it. So when when the um, bonds, whether they be short term, intermediate term, long term, government or corporate, whatever they may be, their bonds are interest rate sensitive. And so when they are in decline, this means that interest rates are going up and bond yields are going up or they are perceived to go up in the coming period of time. So if there is a belief that they're going up, uh, you will see a decline in bond prices, whether it's the long term or one of the others. The dollar, uh, there's a slight tick up at the very end of this, and you can see. So the dollar dropped a little bit, and now last week it, it actually increased in value a little bit. This is a 42-month weekly chart. Um, gold, because of the tick down at the very end, had a down week, a little bit, not much, and but is still in a major uh, uptrend. Silver had a bigger decline, still in an uptrend, still above the moving average, but um, more, was hit harder than gold. When I compare the two, the degree to which silver is better than gold would represent a time when it goes up. If gold is better than silver, that was represented by a time when it went down. And you can see this past week, where it went down, and that favored gold. Bitcoin uh, had a very good week. Uh, it moved back up above the 20 period moving average and uh, still is in a general uptrend. Volatility index would move, has moved from around 12 to around 16. So that's a pretty big increase, meaning there's more downside volatility in the market than there was. I put my mark at 24 to tell you when I get concerned about uh, downward volatility, uh, we're not there yet. We're a ways away from that, but you can see how close that is. We've gone from the Asbury 6 being uh, positive or mostly positive to now it is split. There are three of their technical indicators and at Asbury Research that are negative, and there are three that are positive. With Asbury, the, uh, there are two comparisons that are clearly positive for the last week, the last month, the last quarter. That is at small cap, which I just covered, you, you can see why, for the last week, month, and quarter is stronger than the broad market. And the emerging markets, represented by the ETF EEM, is stronger than the S&P 500. The rest of the comparisons are mixed. The US versus the world. Now, this is not the currency. Uh, this is the market. Our market being represented by SPY, or the S&P 500, was positive in all three time frames over the Eurozone, Taiwan, and the emerging markets. Uh, India is the only country that was stronger than the US in all three time periods. I've used uh, Thailand, I'm continuing to use it for now, the S&P versus Thailand. The Thailand's, Thailand's probably, from a consistency standpoint, the weakest market in the world. Uh, rel certainly relative to the U.S. And the degree to which this line, I drew an arrow, the degree to which this line goes up is the degree to which the U.S. market is stronger 
than the Thai market. Interesting. As of last Friday, July 19th, uh, gold was down four tenths of one percent, slightly. We saw that compared to the previous Friday. Uh, silver, the uh, spot price of silver, not including the markup, is 29.24. It's come down, and it, in that one week period of time, it was down about 5% from the previous Friday. This brings the gold silver ratio. 82 to 1, gold numerator, silver denominator, um, which makes silver a more attractive buy than gold, in my opinion. When you look at a monster box of silver, uh, this, is, it, it, this is 500 rounds of generic silver, and that is going for, including the markup, is going for $16,045 as of last Friday, based on the spot price, which I just told you. That includes a markup of $2.35 per ounce. This works out to be for 500 rounds, uh, including the markup, 32.09. And it's 50 cents higher than that, or 32.59, when you buy it in a single tube. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.